This is the story of two divers who left the corporate world and moved to Bonaire to live a diver's life by the sea. Many only dream about this life. Our hope is to inspire you through our experiences and stories so that you can live the dream too. This is A Diver's Life. The water and sky, reflection in my eye, and it's true, so true, that my life, that my life is a she shine. around a bit so we get a little bit more light here. Um, uh, one of the other people on the boat who is a famous cinema, cinematographer uh, from the Cousteau team was Didier Nouro. He filmed Wild Canada, I believe, also. Uh, yeah, Didier Nouro is in the Blue Planet. Um, he filmed a lot of... Um, he worked for Blue Planet for the BBC. In fact, Didier and me and other guy were not the first generation. Was, no. the, was the third generation of the Cousteau Diver. Uh -huh. I mean, the first one is started around 1950. Mm -hmm. After came another group in 1970. Mm -hmm. After came a group uh, like me in 1980. Mm -hmm. And came uh, Noiro in 1990. Because mm -hmm. uh, Cousteau was all the time looking for new blood. Mm -hmm. He said, I have enough with the old one. Really? Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He said, well, oh, she, they are all, all time sick or or they are, they are boring. We need new blood. Okay. No, no pity. No, no pity. <laughs> All right. Yeah, he, said, he said to the guy, anyway, you don't make a career with me. Huh? You have to work somewhere else. Okay. So most of the time, every expedition, he created a new team. Mm -hmm. So he had a basic one, mm -hmm. like Falco. Yeah. And uh, two other three guys. But all the time, he was taking new, new, new people, uh, like scientists, like uh, Sarano. Mm -hmm. or filmmaker like Didier Noiro, but Didier Noiro came on board just like a diver. Mm -hmm. But he was so... Uh, that was a guy with a, with a big... Um, he had... He had... Uh, he had uh, bigger stamina. Big stamina, yeah. He, he, he took the camera... Bigger, bigger than life. No, he yeah, took yeah. the camera for the cameraman. Yeah? Yeah. Really? So you know that me now. Nothing would slow him, nothing would stop him. I no, 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 no. He organized himself... Uh, uh, the film on Sipadan. Mm -hmm. It was very, very famous. The film about we put in your film, and uh, the, the turtle came. Mm -hmm. That him who organized everything, Cousteau was not on board. <coughs> wow. Cousteau was not on board, and um, that, uh, Falco was not on board too. And uh, that him who decided to do all the things by himself. Uh -huh. The light, the cable, the, the, the plan, that, that tomorrow. Yeah, I've watched some of his, his personal videos he's put up. He's not boring. He, no, 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 no. <laughs> no, no. He, he's a very, he, and he, he's very tough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you, if, you, if he doesn't want you in a, in, in a film, yeah. out, out. Well, I remember him, there was one he was, it might have been, it was for Wild Canada, where he was filming the whales coming down, hmm. you know, and he sat on the bottom and this gigantic yeah. whale is coming at him. He just, he stuck right in there until he got the shot he yeah. wanted. He was and then Cousteau was very yeah. happy to, to get a guy like, like him. Yeah, yeah. But uh, after the death of Cousteau, most of, the, most of this guy, even me, we, we were out. Yeah. We, we lost, uh, you know, we lost your, our job. And uh -huh. uh, with no more expedition, nothing. Uh -huh. So that's why now we, we can talk about the future. Uh, yeah, you got a new book you're working on, you and Kathy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and Kathy will come. Yeah. yeah, I can come. Uh, this is a sure. book that uh, is, I would say, it's a COVID confinement book. So uh. it started in March and it ended up getting finished, what, a month ago uh, or so? Yeah. And it's um, all the wrecks of the Caribbean that Dominique and I explored over the years. So we with Kathy. With great stories and photos and, and painting. paintings. Any page you open is pretty neat. So you got you got the photographs and the paintings. Yeah, Dominique yeah. with the paintings, me and, with and the, the photos. The, the Catherine photo. And the, and the really nice um, the illustrations. And so it tells the story of all these different wrecks. So let me show you. We go on a path and we document the path. 
beginning. So it tells of our journeys, starting in Aruba, mm -hmm. Curacao Bonaire, to going to Las Aves, yeah. and to Grenada, and northwards through the Grenadines, Martinique, Nevis, the Virgin Islands, up into the Bahamas, down through Cayman, and off to Honduras. Now you've got pictures of, do you have the pictures of the, um the Goliath grouper from Florida in there yeah. also? Yeah. yeah, we couldn't resist. Yeah, yeah sure. those, are, those are phenomenal. Phenomenal, sure. Can show these pictures? These spawning are season yeah. of yeah. Goliath groupers. It's September in Florida and it's it's a mammoth event. Let me find the page. We added them at the back, even though it's really the Atlantic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But we couldn't resist. The, the, the size? Hundreds of them. Hundreds. But, but Catherine, you really succeed to take this photo complete with a yeah. wreck and um, with, with, with in the current, too. Oh, yeah, with a very yeah. hot current. Uh, but yeah. the wrecks in Florida are gathering places for fish, really big gathering places for fish. And mm -hmm. yeah. So that I was, I was looking. Amazing. Look, I was so lucky to. A wall of them. To, to meet Catherine because uh, we, we have a, a complement couple. Yes. So this is this is the original yeah. book that we published yes. in 2002. Yeah. I actually have two copies of that. <laughs> <laughs> you have more than I do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it's fabulous. Yeah, and yeah. then uh, this is the new one. Yeah. New and improved. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So when do you think it'll be be done, Catherine? I mean, that's a um, big story. Publishing in this day and age is quite difficult, yeah. especially for people like us who are always on the move. Yeah. So we can't stock large quantities of books, which mm -hmm. weigh a lot, and move them around. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're really looking at doing e-books with this yeah. and um, print-on-demand books, so selling single-copy books. Yeah. But a book like this costs a lot of money, so we're still researching ways that we can make it affordable mm -hmm. to everybody. And you want to get a few more wrecks in there too, didn't you? Yeah. We want to do Cuba. Yeah. Um, there's a wreck we have in, in mind. We want to do Chinchorro Reef mm -hmm. off of the Yucatan. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to go to Barbados. Mm -hmm. Well, I'd like to go And to there are many more. Let me know when you're going. Yeah, to are you going to come with us? No, no, no. no, no. <laughs> no the more beautiful they are in the Red Sea. Oh, of course, but Definitely. to complete this book, yeah, I'd like to add a couple more the, chapters. The Red Sea is full of fantastic wrecks. Oh, yeah. Because what we choose in, in this book, that the wreck will still look like a wreck, a boat. Mm -hmm. yeah. no, not, a, not a pile of metallic uh, right. waste. And most of the place in the Caribbean that we know, they have been destroyed by a hurricane. Yeah. yeah, that's true, that's true. In the Red Sea, they don't have a hurricane. No, they, no. Yeah, yeah, true well, enough. That's what, that's what, that so we got to do that too. Yeah. If we we have a friend who's coming out mm -hmm. with a book on the Red Sea. I'm sure we're going to get to see all his wreck photos in there. Anyway. But okay. anyway, this but is another one we're working on. So I, I actually showed this new book that they did to uh, someone at Stanapa. And the, the minute, actually, your picture. This book. Yeah. The minute she took, it's just the, the smile that went on her face from this is, this is great. It's such a lovely image of all these line fish escaping down this, out of this, the sewer into the open ocean. Yeah. These line fish that are going so to invade Canada. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the Caribbean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this book will be out in the coming month. Yeah. Uh, for sale on Amazon and other places. In English. In, in, in English. English yeah. Mm -hmm. In English, a little different format, but pretty much it. It's for children. Yeah. Um, sort of. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, it's fabulous. Six to eight year olds would be the target market mm -hmm. because it has some very um, really complicated cool. ecological terms in it, but. A parent could read it to a four-year-old. Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, in this book, that the fish will explain the problem. Yes. The turtle will observe the line fish because she never seen a line fish. Mm -hmm. And after m m more information came from a, uh, a girl a diver in a Curacao. Uh, so Peter Catwin will work yeah. a lot on that. Yeah. And she, uh -huh. she put the book, book together. Mm -hmm. you know, and that only, I wanted to explain that, that only line fish were threaten the sea. Is that us first? Yes. Because first, life is a human problem, and we are all. 
But basically, it's a book about a woman you met in Curacao called Lisette. She, and she has and a living. She makes a living out of hunting lionfish, yeah. selling them to restaurants, and making, um, making jewelry. jewelry. Making jewelry. She yeah, still beautiful that. jewelry. Yeah. And, and she has a store downtown Willemstad. Yeah, where she sells too. jewelry. Yeah, they, 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 People they, they, stock it in Bonaire as well. Yeah. 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 Wow. And uh, it's a good thing. She's helping keeping the lionfish population under control, like mm -hmm. what you yeah, do. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah, yes, yeah, like you? Yeah. yes, yeah, yes, I do some of that. Yes. Yeah. In <laughs> fact, I'm looking, you brought a whole pile of lionfish today, yes, we, fillets, we, yes, for dinner. We, we, yeah, we're going we're gonna to have lionfish dinner uh, the next couple of days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That's going to be great. Well, now if I had fixed my trigger, I would have gotten more. But, <laughs> but uh, yeah. And then, and then I'm working on photo books. Yeah. I'm working on a series called Into the Heart. Mm -hmm. So Into the Heart of Cozumel, Into the Heart of Raja Ampat with, um, you know, Cozumel is a fantastic place. This is a great picture here. I like this. Uh, the With the eel? Yeah, yeah, you got it nice. Yeah. Yeah, lucky shot, huh? Yeah. Anyway, the caves and underpasses and the colors. Yeah. They're electric in Cozumel. It's yes. just one the of the water's really clear there too, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. The yeah. current just washes everything but they, out. They have the same problem anywhere. That means they have the cruise ship. Yeah. And the cruise ship destroys the, the reef because we don't talk we don't talk about the the problem With the ecological cruise. problem who who uh, are menace for the sea, but we should talk about that. Yes, there's this big debate about bringing cruise ships back to Bonaire again. I, I don't want to see them back. I, really oh, don't. I don't want to see them back. No, no. Yeah, but uh, all the business is, uh, is hanging and waiting for cruise ships. The there are other uh, solutions. They, they, they're getting pressure, though, um, locally to not have them come back by a lot of people, including me. You know, we're pushing on our government to... Anyway. Cut it back. We, we so I'm hoping, but what I can what I can say is that, and I've said this in even some of our videos, is since they've gone, um, there's a lot more fish back on the reef. They That's actually cool. saw four sharks the other day over at Klein Bon Air. That's great. Yeah, Caribbean reef sharks usually have to go to the yeah. east, east coast. coast. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, you have but you have less diver, you have less less noise, you have less noise. Yeah. So the, the problem with the big cruise ship that they, they they run the engine all the time on the pier. Yeah. And even us when we dive, we have we have the boom 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 boom. Yeah. The fish they don't like it. No. No, I was in a keepsake dive site one night. The one where they had the land slid down the whole side of oh, the yeah, 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 on that side of Clamp Bonaire. Yeah, and. Um, and you can feel the vibrations going right through you. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's uh, when they're yeah, powering it's terrible. up, it's terrible. So, but you just finished a um, series of paintings which are behind us uh, yeah. of all the beautiful things uh, in look, Bonaire. Uh, if you want look at Because yeah. Bonaire is still but one of the most Bonaire, beautiful Bonaire, first, is a very attractive place. place for diving, an easy place we can dive from shore. Yeah. And that's why I made this painting with, uh, with uh, the shore and the reef. That means when you die, we are close to the shore. Mm -hmm. You can see here, and like you can see the, the house. Of I'll the get out of the way. Yeah. You why, don't show we, why don't we go around and look at the other? Uh, but the other artwork you have here, too, is pretty. Sure. That's the story sure. behind everything. So, all right, let me just pause this a second and we'll go okay. we'll around. Okay. Let's take a break. This painting is from uh, the, w the wind side of um, Bonaire, where we're diving with Catherine to look for uh, a mysterious wreck. You have a fishing boat, you have a a freighter, and this place is full of is full of um, fish, big fish, barracuda, etc. So I recreate this uh, vision. If you if you yeah, huh? it it's, was like that. Huh? It's pretty much like the, that. The wave was crashing on a on a rock with a lighthouse. Storm lighthouse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love the dramatic sky. Ah, the the sky, sky is beautiful. The yeah. sky is beautiful, and this painting is in it's the new Dreamwrecks book. Yeah, it's, quite it's a full page. That you anyway, that's I fabulous. love it. But that's one of the best East Coast windward but dives. But this is Sky. That's where, another one. Where, where I took uh, my friend uh, Rich to dive the first time. Yes. Yeah, with all the tarpoon the and tarpoon. we have the, the conch uh, uh, shell uh, pyramid here. Uh -huh. And you have those tarpoon in the channel. So I, I like to show the half. That means uh, the half on the sea and the. Uh, 
because we have the, here is the salt pier. Uh -huh. And we have uh, the pillar here, and uh, around the pillar you have a lot of uh, fish, even ray, turtle, tarpon. Uh, this is Catherine here. It's one of my favorite dives because on the pilings you have so many fish yeah. that you can get in really close and do really nice macro photography. Yeah, I know the, a lot of people they skip this whole area in the first 15 feet and it's just beautiful up there. That's the best. Yeah. With the, the light of the, the day and the sunlight coming in and the beautiful shadows and bright lights. Yeah, that's gorgeous. That's gorgeous. Okay, so your next one here is. Um, but that's why we, we, that we, we dove together. Yes, yes. Slack by. Slack by, yes. So Slack by, we worked together and uh, it was. Um, it was beautiful, and uh, because uh, the good thing in Bonaire that is, is uh, spectacular underwater and out of water. Yes, uh, you have a uh, different. You have uh, the wow. volcano uh, silhouette and and all the all the reef. What I like is all this part, the the shallow yeah. at yeah. Slag by yeah. the shallow um, coral formations, formations that are starting to come back again. Yeah, they were sure. kind of wiped out by Lenny, but they're on their way back. Yeah, I need to take the boat up there and, and uh, hit I this again. We will get, we will we'll go with you. Okay, that'd be great. And here, this is about um, the, the Klein Bonaire with the Aqua Space, uh, famous um, crystal uh, hull boat. Uh, now, who now who who designed that boat again? It was uh, Jacques Rougerie. Yeah. Again, he's a French. Yeah. Like uh -huh. Cousteau, a yeah. lot of imagination, a lot of uh, ideas, and now this boat is in. Uh, uh, in Bonaire with André, who will take care of the organized trip. And you, you have this wall here that you know very well, and sometimes you have the, the dolphin. Oh, it's oh, gorgeous yeah. in the shallows of Point yeah. Bonaire. Yeah. And here, at the, the south of Bonaire, you have a red slave, yeah. a red slave where we can see a lot of ray who swim. That's and uh, the anchor of the, of the boat who were coming before. Uh -huh. Great anchor. To take uh, Many the anchors. source. Yeah, they got a lot of anchors up there. Yeah. And you, you, you know them? Uh, some of them, but yeah. Some but are deep. Yeah. As I understand, these obelixes on the shore were yeah, how yeah, they for, signaled for, yeah, it's, it's the specific all. boat to come to pick up from the, the, salt. the salt. The salt, yes. Okay. So the obelixes down the island were all different colors depending on who was supposed to collect so what. The Helmauger, the, the touristy creek of, of Bonaire. Uh, this is a very good dive, especially in the morning when you have nobody. Mm -hmm. You have uh, only the fish, uh, the barracuda and the, and, uh, tarpon. the tarpon. Tarpon, yeah. Oh. That's great. Look yeah. at this guy. This guy is over at uh, Klein Bonaire just in front of the apartment. He's a wonderful grouper that comes up to me quite often. And, you're yeah. Yeah. and this is a series that I did from photos. Uh -huh. So painting on my digitally painting it. Yeah. And the yeah. turtle here. And the turtle. Yeah, there are yeah. plenty of them. Oh yes, that's that's fabulous. I love that. That's a really great green turtle picture. And, and what I like so so much, see she, she's just under the, this uh, gorgonas and she has that on her. Yeah. Hey, look. yeah. Oh I know, the dust of Bonaire. It's Saharan dust. So Kathy, what's the process? I mean, you take the picture, but then you, what, what do you do for creating this effect? Don't say nothing, it's a secret. <laughs> um, That's a secret. Say my nothing. big secret weapon, yeah. and I'm not gonna tell you all my techniques, is I have this amazing Wacom tablet uh, computer. It's a, a draw pad that's this big that allows me to really w rework images with digitally. Yeah. And we, have to, we have to go we look at it or later, yeah? Sure, oh, okay. I can show you my Wacom. Okay. A little bit about the lionfish book. Yeah. This is one that I, I um, put together in Lightroom. From, and uh, look. Yeah, oh, that's wonderful. Rich, Doreen, don't forget your camera. Oh, thanks, Rich. I totally forgot it. So this is a little <laughs> gift that I was making for you, oh, where wonderful. I was changing all the names of the characters. Oh, that's great. Yeah. That's great. It'll be a lovely book. Wow. So, here we go. Yeah. Here's the original image. 
Yep. And here's the final result. So basically I've taken this whole image and redrawn everything with in Photoshop with my tablet, mm -hmm. which uh, I can probably show you. We're going to um, zoom in and do a little bit of a yellow highlight under here. Not that he has much yellow mm -hmm. in his, but it needs a little bit on the edge of that eye up here. And a little bit of blackening in here, just to get a better sense of it. And a little bit of white around the edge, give it me some more definition. The amazing thing is the different paint brushes that exist and working with this um, tablet, mm -hmm. it's incredibly sensitive to pressure mm -hmm. and to direction and you can define your brushes to do pretty much anything. Um, I've been using a bit more of a splatter technique mm -hmm. lately. Yeah. So Kathy, I mean, I mean, you spend what days on on some of these photographs? Yeah, 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 yeah. Look at all the detail in there that I've put in. I mean, if you zoom right in, yeah, you get to see what the detail is. Mm. Something that you probably don't see when it's hanging ten feet away from you on the wall, but uh, yeah, just doing this little piece oh. is look at his little. <laughs> Anyway, secret weapon. Secret weapon. Secret weapon. It was taken in Palau at Jellyfish Lake, I think it's called. Yes, yes. I don't know. Oh, yeah. Yeah. always fun to see that. Uh, and just, it's, it's all snorkeling near the surface with the light coming in. Yeah, and these uh, jellyfish uh, don't sting anymore because they haven't had predators in the lake for so many years. They lost their stinging ability. So, yeah. That's that's fabulous. I like this one. Yeah. Great Barrier Reef. Yeah. Out out as far out as you can on uh, the spoils port. Yeah. With a, a wonderful photographer called Julia Summerling who took me out there and we found these baby sharks in a cave. Yeah. And that's the, the, one that's one the basis of it. That's nice. So what do you now but you got these faces around here? Yeah. What is, what is that all about? Well, um, I sort of saw these faces in the rocks and I decided that I should give life to it and draw these faces into the, the, the rocks. Um, I figured these poor baby sharks have been there. Uh, sharks are how old? The, one of the oldest. Uh, I don't know how old. Sharks are one of the oldest. Yeah, it's 35 million. 35 now. million. And they've made it. Yeah. And look at our society. It's crumbled. We've got all the different uh, Romans and yeah. uh, they're all lying there in rubble. That's, <laughs> that's the concept yeah. that brought me to this. This is a work that appeared uh, a few years ago in Florida at an exhibit in Palm Beach. And uh, it's uh, printed on aluminum, white aluminum, and then back mounted on acrylic. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's when awesome. I presented it to the people in Florida for the exhibit, they didn't want to show it. Uh, they said really? I was glorifying lionfish and they are an invasive species. Uh, but finally, so I said, I'm pulling out of the exhibit if you're not going to show this. And they succumbed to the pressure. Mm -hmm. But uh, gosh, lionfish are so pretty. And this yeah. is on a night dive just in front of the apartment Yeah. on the um, beautiful bay sponge. So this one is of um, a lionfish actually where it's supposed to be in the Red Sea. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know, it looks more comfortable in this natural setting. <laughs> so this is the wall of faces of Bonaire underwater and everybody is looking at you. If you stand right in the middle, they're all saying hello. Uh -huh. And anyway. This is fabulous. Yeah, you people like it. it. It's sort it's of like an installation work. Frogfish, eagle ray up close, a little uh, blenny, hogfish, grouper, 
Rich, help me out here. Gobi. Gobi, yeah. Honeycomb uh, cowfish. Yeah. Angel. Angelfish. Queen angel. Queen angel. This one. Is oh, that the reef parrot? I can't remember. It's a parrotfish, but I think it's a stoplight. Stoplight? I don't know. I don't so. And this is a, a French angelfish and a nice little hawksbill. Yeah, this is beautiful. Australia. Yeah. Yeah. And those are sweet, sweet lips. lips. Oh, that's beautiful. Huge gang of them. Bonaire turtle. A Bonaire turtle? Oh, that's awesome. It is awesome. definitely a Bonaire turtle. <laughs> this, is the, this is the stern of the windjammer? Yeah, that's what, how is it now? That's what it looks like now because it's fallen over. Yeah, it's not the oh, same wreck okay. when we do. Parrotfish and linefish. Mr. Linefish is everywhere. They are beautiful fish. Yeah, no, and they are very good to eat. Yeah. You've got quite a view here, Kathy. Well, thanks, Rich. Yeah. We love it. I'd never get sick of it. No. And then uh, on the other side, we see um, the north end of the island, which is your favorite, right? Yes, I love the north end Let's of the island. Let's go look at far. that. And okay. You can see Brandera, but just. Just, you can just see her. Yeah. This guy, uh, on this photo, this guy is old. Yeah. But when, when I, when he was, before he was like that. Yes. And he was wor wor working, editing all the things by himself. Yes. That was him. Yeah, and, and writing and, and. And writing and he was, uh, was, he was working all the time. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I, I know, I know what, <laughs> I know a little bit of what that's like. And then also he said, uh, why should we preserve a li livable planet? If it's not for our children or grandchildren. I mean, he had a vision of the future. He, uh, he, talked, he talked about the global warming in 1980. Yeah. Well, Dominic, I think it's important that, I know a lot of people are very interested in this, and that's the Calypso and the Cousteau family going forward. I mean, people, a lot of people are wondering what's happening with the Calypso. Um, some people may be wondering what John Michel is doing. I know he's a, a big activist. What are your thoughts? Okay, the poor Calypso yeah. uh, sunk in uh, the harbor of uh, Singapore. Singapore. Yeah. Kutsu was still alive, yes. but uh, he couldn't save Calypso. No. They, they, they tried to, they took Calypso back to France, they tried to do different things, but now Calypso is, is in a faraway spot in Turkey. They, they couldn't uh, repair it. But basically, why? Because that's, for me, Calypso was just an old boat. Yeah. Old boat from uh, the, the last war. Mm -hmm. And Calypso was famous, it was acting, because Cousteau wasn't born. It mm -hmm. was like uh, all the energy of Calypso. Yes. That means if you don't have the team, if you don't have the money, if you don't have the captain on board, Calypso is just an old rotten boat. He, 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 like yeah, you look, like look at it that way. Yeah. He, yeah. he put for so many years so much energy on his boat, mm -hmm. so much money, so much uh, program, that Calypso was, was famous. But by itself, Calypso has uh, really no value. And you have many Calypso. Uh -huh. but, uh, it was not only one, but it was a series of uh, minesweepers in the States. Sure. So what is important, more than an uh, old wooden boat, I think, is the spirit of the people, and what is important, more important, is the spirit of the of the Kusu family. Mm -hmm. uh, they were my impetus for doing what I'm doing today. Um, they made another life for me, even you know, where I was working in the computer industry. People didn't know about, and it's it's the thing that really made me happy. Is the is the sea. And I, we, we all have a, a normal life in the job, and you have some people they are here to make us dreaming. And I think that Cousteau, through the TV series, the book, the conference, he was making people dreaming about another life. You know, after he passed away, the, 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 all of the family have been activists. Jean-Michel seems to be the one who's done maybe the most of all the Cousteau family since then. Okay, in us? the Cousteau family, there were two brothers. You had Philippe, yes. who was uh, like a flamboyant uh, uh, person, and he was using um, all the, the way possible to help the father by uh, taking image from the air, yeah, the hot, hot air balloon, yes. uh, helicopter, um, gyrocopter, and, uh, and uh, hydroplane. But at the end, the hydroplane 
crashed in uh, Portugal and so he died. Yes. And Jean-Michel was more quiet, but helping also Cousteau in many, many ways. Yes. Start to become more involved in the Cousteau society. So mm -hmm. he created another team. They used another boat, it was Alcyon. Mm -hmm. But after the, the death of old Cousteau, it was a big problem in the family. Yes. So he preferred to retire then on his side. Yeah. And he is uh, in California, mm -hmm. living in uh, Santa Barbara, I think. Mm -hmm. And uh, he created um, uh, an association called uh, Ocean Future. Yes. And he tried to convince people to think of the future of the ocean. And he tried to inform uh, the, the politician, because he was in contact with the mm -hmm. Bush president and people like that, mm -hmm. to create a marine reserve. So I think Jean Michel could have just retreat in mm -hmm. the south of France, yeah. quiet, mm -hmm. drink pastis and uh, play the bull, mm -hmm. and have an easy life, but not. He, he, he tried to, to keep going on, and uh, he has a son, Fabien Cousteau, mm -hmm. he has a daughter, Céline Cousteau, mm -hmm. and they keep going too. Yes. And uh, they try to follow on the step of, the, of Jacques Cousteau, and I think it's important that uh, these people, they, they, they keep uh, on the same way. Yes. Why not? Well, they've impacted a lot of people, and I, I, I personally would like to thank them for all they've done for me. I'm a bit of an activist myself. But, uh, we do a lot of things like sponge relocation on, on Bonaire when they're removing the sleeves. We do cleanup dives. We do, do other things. We promote the preservation of coral in some of our videos, but all started with that family. Now, that was an idea of Kutu. He said uh, we can think globally, but to have to act locally. Yes. We are not all Cousteau. Yeah. But, um, for example, I met uh, with Jean-Michel. Oh, let's see the little orchestra. Okay, yeah. See, I'm with Jean-Michel here. Yes. So it's a book about the orca. Uh, the title is the Orca, Spirit of the Sea. Yes. Okay. Oh, you have a photo of Jean-Michel here when he was six with, uh, with his father. It's, it's, yeah. it's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. So, he's a family yes. with a spirit. Yeah. And um, I'm very happy to, to keep contact uh, with Jean-Michel. Protéger les océans, yes. c'est se protéger soi-même. Voilà. Yeah. And Cousteau was a visionary, and he was uh, one of the first ones to talk about the problem of uh, pollution and uh, also nuclear waste in the sea, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But it's a problem that he didn't think, because this time was not, was a plastic in the sea. Yes. So I made this book with another guy who is uh, on the same way as Cousteau. His name is Patrick Dexon. Mm -hmm. And he, he created um, an association, Seven, con Seven Continent. Well, that's, a, that's, a, that's a beautiful drawing there also, painting. Yeah. And uh, this guy has a special, um, he's a special guy. He crossed the Atlantic rowing. Okay. I think I've seen, yeah, I have seen that. That's right, I have seen that. OK. So how did you meet him? Okay, this is, I met him in uh, Martinique. Yeah. And he, during the time he was rowing to cross uh, the Atlantic, because he was rowing, he was moving very, very slow. Mm -hmm. He has seen so much plastic yeah. in the middle of the Atlantic. That means if you are on a boat, a big boat, like a cruise ship, we mm -hmm. don't see nothing. Right, right. You are playing bingo or casino on board, but you don't see what is in the sea. Yeah. And also, you have to be close to the sea to, to look all this um, uh, box and stuff like that. You know? mm -hmm. And so he made also whales and um, dolphin, mm -hmm. turtle, but he said to me, I've seen more plastic than fish. He was willing to um, share the, this experience with the kids, with the young people, and he had mm -hmm. seen my book with Cousteau, and so yeah. he proposed me um, if I could make a book with him. Mm -hmm. So I made this book with him. So he explained that everything starts, for example, by the river also. Huh? Paris, when the tourists they drop some uh, mm -hmm. plastic can in the river Seine, it ends on the sea. And when the people are on a cruise ship, yeah. they don't realize how much stuff they, they put in the sea. You know, when the cruise ships were here, we would go on a cleanup dive and just hats. We would find on what, what 20 hats on one cleanup yeah, dive. I think it's not only the plastic that we can see, but the plastic we can't see. I mean, the microplastic, the plastic that the fish eat. Yes. Because they confuse this plastic with uh, plankton. So, 
You have these people, you have uh, Paul Watson from Sea Shepherd, you have a lot of people that have been inspired by Cousteau. Yes. And um, I think it, what, what is important is to, to keep going. Yes. To, to going on. And um, the last time I did something that I really like with, with Catherine, this is his book about lionfish. Yes. Because lion this is to explain to the kids how the lionfish uh, now are around the Caribbean. Uh, on our web with Catherine, also we, we, we try to keep on, and we, we make books like that. Uh, yeah. Yes. On this book, uh, sea, yes. Dream Wrecks of the Caribbean, we, we explain that even an uh, old boat can become an uh, oasis of life, a place to hide for yes, the fish. Yes, yes. But this is artificial reef. Huh? Artificial reef, yes. And uh, all the boats are not good to, to sink. No, they are, no, no, no. They are full of oil, they are full of uh, bad uh, stuff. But in Bonaire, we have a uh, famous uh, Hilma Hooker. Oh, Hilma Hooker wreck, yeah. But yeah, some great so she can things. show the, the beauty of a, of a wreck mm -hmm. when it becomes a real uh, oasis of life. Yes. With plankton and uh, sponge and coral mm -hmm. on. So you, you see, uh, on our way, we, 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 we are like you. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, we, we try to do something. Okay, maybe it's not very important, it's not so important that Cousteau did, but that is their thing. It doesn't seem to start with government. It seems to it all starts with individuals. It was a boy in slot. He's uh, picking up the garbage patch, and then he invented that at a very young age. Uh, we go out and we collect um, plastics. Mm -hmm. We have designated areas uh, around Bonaire, and the data is used to uh, influence the Caribbean governments as to what they should do to restrict certain types of things. Yeah. One of the things that is happening now on Bonaire. And to some degree, I think the data has helped with that is we're going to see uh, single-use plastics go away in the next year. And we have things at, the, at home like silicon bags that you can reuse and wash them out instead of using plastic. So it's, uh, it's having an impact. And I think even Jacques Cousteau in his day, you know, it was an individual that took on de Gaulle on the, on the dumping. You know, it wasn't a, it wasn't a, wasn't the government that did. Oh, we got to no, get no, rid no, of no. Most of the time, the government yeah. they just oh, they need to be pushed. They need to be pushed by the uh, citizen. Yeah. If the citizens start to say, "Hey, please, yeah. we would like that," maybe on top of the government they start to realize what, what happens. Yeah. And uh, maybe they, keep, they can pass some rules or some some law, but everything starts with, with the individual. Yes. I think it's a very good idea to, to do that. Is that what we do even today with this film? Yes. We try to uh, share with others uh, this um, uh, possibility for the young and for the old one also to, to have a little uh, influence. Thank you, Dominique. Okay. okay. <laughs> Thank you, Rich. Okay. I think it was, um, I was very pleased to have the possibility to, to talk about this period of my life where I've been so influenced by uh, this guy, Cousteau that he influenced many, many people, uh, like me, you, and probably the other one. And if we keep talking about him, if we keep talk, talking about this, this guy, we, we can keep our hope for mm -hmm. the best future. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. And, ciao, uh, ciao. Ciao. <laughs> okay. Done. Okay. If you enjoyed this video, please like it and hit the subscribe button and the bell. It goes a long way to supporting this channel and helps you to know when new content is released. Thank you for watching.